two more types of functions we need to learn how to take the derivatives of are logarithmic and general exponential functions. As a reminder, here's a graph of e to the x that has a domain of negative infinity to infinity and a range of 0 to infinity. The inverse function, that's the one that's going to be reflected over the line y equals x, the inverse function of e to the x is natural log of x. Its domain is the range of the original function, that is 0 to infinity, and its range is negative infinity to infinity. We're going to start off with x equals e to the y. Next what I'm going to do is take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. The derivative of x with respect to x is simply 1, and I need to remember that y is a function of x. Therefore, I'm going to have to use the chain rule on the right-hand side. So when I take the derivative of the right-hand side, it's e to the y times y prime. Now I need to solve for y prime, just like I did when I did implicit differentiation. So I get y prime is equal to 1 over e to the y. Well, that's not particularly helpful because I want this in terms of x. But I recall that x is simply equal to e to the y, so y prime is equal to 1 over x. So therefore, the derivative with respect of natural log of x is 1 over x. Again, I need to specify that this is when x is greater than 0. If I wanted to not have that constraint, I could instead use the absolute value of x and say the derivative with respect to x of the natural log of the absolute value of x is equal to 1 over x. We will have the stipulation that x can't be equal to 0. Let's expand this one more way. Let's say I have the derivative of the natural log of some function of x, we'll call it u of x, and again that's going to still be the absolute value. By the chain rule, this would be equal to 1 over u of x, because that's the derivative of natural log of x, times the derivative of what I was taking the natural log of, in this case u prime of x. So this whole thing simplifies to u prime of x over u of x. Personally, I don't memorize this form. I stick with memorizing the second form here, and then I just use the chain rule. Let's do four different examples. First of all, the, the derivative of natural log of 4x, that's simply equal to 1 over 4x times the derivative of the inside of the natural log function, which is 4, or 1 over x. For the second one, I'm going to have to use the product rule, and that would be the derivative of x, which is 1 times the natural log of x, plus x times the derivative of natural log of x, which is 1 over x, or the final answer of natural log of x plus 1. For our third example, we have y equals the natural log of secant of x. So again, y prime is going to be 1 over secant of x times the derivative with respect to x of the secant of x. If we remember that from our trigonometric derivatives, the derivative with respect to x of secant of x is tangent x secant x. The secants will divide out, and our y prime is just equal to tangent of x. Let's zoom in on our second example. For this, we're going to need the quotient rule. So this is going to be equal to the derivative with respect to x of natural log of x squared times x squared minus natural log of x squared times the derivative of x squared. That one's pretty straightforward. That's simply 2x. And we'll divide that by the denominator squared, which would be x to the fourth. The derivative of natural log of x squared, that's going to be 1 over x squared times the derivative of x squared, which is 2x. And when I simplify that, I get this. I could simplify this a little bit more by dividing out the x, but I don't want you to get in the habit of that because it's easy to make mistakes. And on the gateway exam, all you need to do is get to this step. Because at this point, there's no complex fractions and no negative exponents. So now that we know how to find the derivative of natural log of x, we need to now go from the derivative of just e to the x to a general derivative of b to the x. In order to come up with this, we're going to use one of the tricks I told you. We're going to rewrite b to the x as e to the natural log of b to the x. e to the natural log of something is just that something, and then I'm going to use the power rule of logarithms to rewrite it like this. Now that I have something in the form of e to the something, well, now I'm just going to use the chain rule. So this is simply e to the something times the derivative of that something. 
Now, don't fall into the trap of thinking that the derivative with respect to x of natural log of b is 1 over b, because remember, this is a constant. And since it's a constant, we can pull that out, and the derivative of x with respect to x is simply 1. And as a last step, I'm going to rewrite this first product back into e to the natural log of b to the x, and finally, b to the x times natural log of b. Notice this works also with the base being e, because if that b was an e, I would have e to the x times natural log of e. Well, natural log of e is simply 1, so this works in all cases. Well, let's do two quick examples of this. The derivative of 3 to the x is simply 3 to the x times the natural log of 3. For my second example, it's 108 times 2 to the t over 12. So this is going to be 108 times 2 t to the 12 times the natural log of b, which is 2. But then on top of it, I still need to do the chain rule. That is, it wasn't just 2 to the t power, it was t over 12. So this whole thing is equal to 108 times 2 t to the 12th times natural log of 2 times 1 over 12. And this whole thing then simplifies to 9, natural log of 2, 2 to the t divided by 12 power. Let's do three more examples and to show the difference between x to a number versus a number to the x power. The first example, y prime is simply equal to pi times x to the pi minus 1. That's using my general power rule, and that's for positive x. For my second case, now I have an exponential function, which that means y prime is equal to pi to the x times natural log of pi. Finally, in my third example, I'm going to just be using my power rule, and then I need to use the chain rule. And that's my final answer. So you need to pay close attention to when x is in the exponent, or x is the base of the exponent. Let's do something absolutely crazy now. Let's find out how to take care of x raised to something of the x power. The trick to this is to do the same trick that we used before to find the derivative of b to the x. We'll rewrite this as e to the natural log of x to the sine of x. I'm going to use the power rule again. And now to take the derivative, I'm going to simply use my derivative of e to the x and the chain rule. So first it's e to the sine x natural log of x times the derivative with respect to x of sine x natural log of x. Now I'm going to have to use the product rule. So the derivative of sine x is cosine x, and the derivative of natural log of x is 1 over x. After I rewrite my first product back in terms of e to the natural log of something, I will get that my final answer is simply this. So I've come up with these two derivatives. The derivative of natural log of the absolute value of x is 1 over x, as long as x does not equal 0. And the derivative with respect to x of b to the x is equal to b to the x times natural log of b. There's one more I want to add to this, and I'm not going to prove it, because I think it's pretty straightforward to see. But if I take any log to the base b of the absolute value of x, that's going to equal not just 1 over x, but 1 over x times the natural log of b. And again, that will be for x not equaling 0. And there you have the three important log and exponential derivatives.